Good morning, church. (laughs) Welcome, everyone, to First Christian Church in Bartlesville. We are so glad that you've joined us, whether you're joining us virtually or joining us in person. We appreciate your presence. Our hearts are full today as we gather for the final worship service, our closing worship service. First Christian Church in Bartlesville has ministered to the people of this community for 125 years. And this day is one that we will remember. Some of you may have been on the cradle roll here in the congregation. Many were baptized here. Others have come more recently. But the thing that we have in common in this community of Christ is that it has left a mark on us. As the people of Christ, in turn, you have also left a mark on the people that you have encountered. Today, we extend a special welcome to some of our folks who are here. There are so many of you that I'm just now seeing and would love to introduce, so I'm going to stick with just a few basics. Reverend Pamela Holt, Regional Minister of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Oklahoma, is with us today. Reverend Michael Davison, our Associate Regional Minister, is also with us. And from Phillips Theological Seminary, Reverend Terry Ewing. I also understand uh, Reverend Dr. Lisa Barnett is with us. I think I, somewhere, there you are, there you are. I can't tell with the mask. (laughs) From the Christian Church Foundation, we have the Reverend Bobby Holly, And from the Oklahoma Christian Foundation, Julie Bowers, uh, Reverend Kyle Maxwell and his spouse, Reverend Debbie Powell Maxwell. I want to extend a special welcome this morning, though, to Disciples Christian Church and their members. Uh, Their senior minister, Reverend Kelly Becker, is with us today, and also their associate minister, Reverend Anna Pratt. Um, We welcome that congregation who has decided to share this special time with us. So welcome. We also have some special guests from different community agencies that First Christian Church has supported over the years. Um, The ones that I know of, um, On the Rock Ministries, Concern, and there may be others of you out there, and welcome. Please know that we are so delighted to have you with us. So now let us enter fully into worship. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Please rise for the call to worship and for our hymn. Would you please join me in the call to worship? This is a day like no other, yet like every other. Our hearts fill with love for those who have served in this place. We remember hymns that were sung, bread that was broken, the cup poured and shared. Here we have celebrated, laughed, and mourned. Here our faith was nurtured, the gospel quenching our thirst with living water. We rejoice in God's goodness and mercy on a day like no other, on a day like every other, for God's steadfast love endures forever.
uh, we would like to read some correspondence received from some previous ministers from this church. Uh, the first one is from Reverend Gary and Barbara Thornton. Gary was a former associate minister at First Christian. They now live in Denton, Texas. Dear friends, it was with extreme sadness that we read your announcement and invitation to join First Christian Church for its final service. Barbara and I remember with fondness our relationship with First Christian. You took a young seminary graduate and his wife and polished off some of the rough edges before releasing them to ministry elsewhere in the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. And now, after almost 50 years, we would know very few of the current members of First Christian. Those who were high school and junior high students back then are now approaching retirement and could very well be grandparents by now. As much as we would like to pay a vinyl, final visit to First Christian in Bartlesville, our schedule does not allow us to do so. Oh, how we wish we could be in two places at the same time. Blessings to you as you remember and culminate your ministry to our Lord Jesus Christ and to his church. In his name and spirit, Gary and Barbara. This is from Dean Lyerly, former minister. Members of First Christian Church, thanks for the invitation to your last service. I am age 89 and health prevents my attendance. It was my privilege to serve as your minister from June 1, 1975 until September 15, 1987. Many memories. Construction of the dining hall and offices, rebuilding of the organ, the employment of Lee Brown, who still works for us, <laughs> my, first, my first wife's funeral, my two children graduating from high school, and living on Valley Road. On this last Sunday, I am praying for all the members who remain and that they will find new churches to continue their faith journey. May God's blessings be on each of you. Dean K. Lyerly. This is from the Reverend Dr. Richard Stern a Timothy of First Christian Church. This church is dear to me. Many of my oldest, warmest, and most inspiring memories are of First Christian Church in Bartlesville. I remember when we worshiped at Garfield School across the street during construction of the present sanctuary. And shortly after moving in, George Beasley's joy in pointing out prophet symbols in our stained glass windows. I can't forget being baptized above the communion table after affirming my faith in Jesus as the Christ, Son of God, Savior of the world, and in George's phrase, promising to follow him wherever he may lead. And my first time getting to preach was in the pulpit on a youth Sunday with Barbara Turk and Philip Culbertson. Friendships were established here with Rita Mae Cheney, Sue Cossey, Sandra Caswell, Jim Palmer, Louise Kane, the Parson, Shiflett, and Haynes family, the Elliots, Caswells, Williams, Cooks, Simpsons, Turks, Culbertsons, Lamasters, McCulloughs, Wards, and Boyts, and many others. This is where my sister grew up, my father and brother were elders and my mother oversaw the nursery. I remember in the 1950s the amazing stewardship of the congregation that gave 50% of its budget to outreach. And I'll never forget hearing our minister praise Martin Luther King Jr. as a good Baptist preacher of the gospel when most of the town denounced him as a troublemaker, if not a communist. <laughs> First Christian was where I learned to discern the truth and power of the gospel and to see the gospel as the lens for understanding and challenging the world rather than sanctifying public opinion or middle-class moralism. It was in this sanctuary that I first felt called into ministry to study, interpret, and teach scripture. George Beasley and Orville Hope 
played major roles in my coming to New York in 1970 to enroll at Union Theological Seminary. And it was at 6th and Osage that I was ordained on December 30th, 1974. Although I have retired from being a seminary professor here in the city, and my church membership has long been at Park Avenue Christian Church in Manhattan, First Christian Church in Bartlesville will always be my church home. God has blessed the ministry of First Christian Church church in Bartlesville over many decades, and its love of Christ and faithfulness to follow wherever he may lead continues in the hearts and lives of its own great cloud of witnesses. Thanks be to God, Richard Spence. As Paul said to the faithful in the church of Philippi, the saints in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you are making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will continue on. I am honored as your regional minister to be with you this morning. It is important for Randy and I, my husband Randy and I, to worship with you for several reasons. First, uh, we wanted to be here today to represent the Holt family. Reverend Dr. Orville Holt, who was just mentioned, uh, was the minister here in the 60s and early 70s, and he is my husband's uncle. He and his wife, Margaret, always remember this congregation with such joy. And during those years, their children, Tim, Becky, and Cindy, were raised here, and their faith distinctly shaped by this congregation. The memories of this congregation is still very present in their hearts and minds. The second reason it's important for me to be with you is because I am the regional minister. I know the prayers and emotions and discernments and decisions that you all have wrestled with over the last few years. And I can only imagine how difficult this day is for you as church members. I am grateful for your minister, Reverend Susan Payne, who with deep compassion and gentleness has led you all to this moment, this momentous moment today. So it's important for me to be present with you this morning to acknowledge your vulnerability and your courage and your grief and your hope. I want to share a little snippet from the history of First Christian Church. It's a remarkable book if you haven't read it, which reflects some of the realities of the life in the 1890s in the settlement that became Bartlesville, where we are today. Entertainment, as we know it today, was practically non-existent. Undoubtedly, some looked upon religious activity as entertainment. Revival meetings drew large crowds and continued for several weeks. Oratory was a flourishing art. Transportation was primitive. You either walked rode a horse, went in a horse-drawn carriage, or you stayed at home. The nearest passenger, passenger train stopped at Caney and Coffeyville, Kansas. However, one could ride hack to Caney for a price. The Magnet, that's the newspaper, for December 6, 1895, carried the following item. 
W.W. W. Purcell was shot and instantly killed by George S. Swift on Thursday morning of this week. It appears that there has been trouble between the parties for some time of what nature we do not know. The next edition editorialized that there is entirely too much promiscuous shooting going on around this town of late. And still later, Jim Cody of Nawada, the deputy marshal, was here to look into the fact of our young men carrying revolvers. I'm not so sure that that's not of this day and age. In another vein, the newspaper advertised 25 pounds of navy beans for one dollar. 25 pounds for one dollar. But in 1991, Homeland, the grocery store, offered navy beans for 79 cents a pound. Wow. Pecans were worth a dollar a bushel. Liver regulator, one-minute cough cure for weak lungs, and battle axe chewing tobacco. Anybody still got that? Uh, were offered in advertisement. And also, in the newspaper, it said, if you are in the habit of going to sleep in church, you do not help the preacher any by occupying the front seat. In 1895, when Reverend James Rufus Charlton came to preach two sermons in the settlement now known as Bartlesville, life was uncertain, especially for children. Medicine was primitive at best. Patent medicines with claims to cure everything was abundant. Their popularity was due in no small part to high alcohol content and or the presence of hard drugs. Such patent medicines could be purchased by anybody at the nearest drugstore. The nation was in the midst of its first cocaine epidemic. And in reading the newspapers of the day, one becomes aware of the horrible death rate among pioneer children. They died of summer fever one day and were buried the next. In spite of these difficulties and advers adversities, the people of the 1890s may have been more confident of their future than even we are today. Hard times, folks. In the midst of this culture, 125 years ago, there were some people, though, who caught the spirit, who ignited the spark and fanned the flames of the good news of Jesus Christ. They did not just gather their resources together to build a building. They gathered their gifts, their gifts of preaching and teaching and witnessing and healing and caregiving and equipped the people for building up the body of Christ right here in Bartlesville so that they would no longer be tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every Oklahoma wind, and they built themselves up in love. These folks believed in God's amazing grace and learned that God's forgiveness and love was some kind of powerful, and so they continued the journey together. So today we stand on the shoulders of some very amazing faithful folks who have blessed this congregation, and now you, who continue to be living witnesses of Christ to one another and to the community and to the world. The people of First Christian Church have been strong, have been a strong disciple present in Bartlesville, the region, and the denomination. And while today it feels like your ministry is coming to an end, in many ways it is. However, because of this congregation's generosity over the years, over the years, and because of this congregation's remarkable faith and stewardship, the ministry of First Christian Church is not ending 
it is not ending at all. You, you all are still among the living and God will most certainly need your gifts to continue to build the dream of God's kingdom wherever you choose to worship and serve. Your experience, your wisdom, your commitment to the care of humanity and creation as Jesus does are all vital to the ministry that we do together. The building in all of its beauty is going to the city to be used in yet unimagined ways. And the financial legacy that you all are repurposing will provide ministry for many, many years to come in, yes, again, not yet imagined ways. All the saints from this congregation have much to be proud of. And the ministry that is transforming yet again will continue on to share the love and the grace of Jesus Christ and it is still remarkable, and it is still extraordinary in ways that have yet to unfold. I, too, am certain that the one who began this good work here in you will continue on. And I believe that First Christian Church in Bartlesville is still and will always be strong, and faithful, as will each of you, because God's steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Beautiful, beautiful words. We come to our time of prayer. On a usual Sunday morning, we would ask for joys and concerns from the congregation, but your hearts are full. I can tell. We would have so many that we would be here past, well past one o'clock, and I think you're, you're not going to last that long. So if you will, join me in prayer. Loving God, this morning, we come into your presence knowing that you are with us, always near, even in times such as these, perhaps especially in times such as these. We rejoice in the marvelous things that have been done in your name, in this place, and with these, your people. Help us to remember and to celebrate what was good and lovely and pleasing in your sight. For the community built among fellow believers, we give you thanks. For the worship, the word preached, and the music made, we give you thanks. For the ministries established and sustained, we give you thanks. For the faithful and dedicated leaders in all of the areas of the church, we give you thanks. For the ministers, for the pastors, for the staff members, for all of those who sought to guide and to serve this church, we give you thanks. Oh God, today we also confess that there were things that we did not do, which should have been done, and there were things that were done or spoken or said which should not have been. Forgive us for the ways that we've fallen short and help us to forgive ourselves in time. God, we know that today is an ending and that we will greet it with joy and sadness, with tears and laughter, and perhaps even with anger at what will be lost. Help us to navigate our grief. And yet, oh God, we are Easter people, and we know that with death comes resurrection. With endings come metamorphosis and rebirth. Help us to remember all of the ways that First Christian will continue to live through the lives of the people who pass through these doors, 
through the legacy of care that we leave to the wider church ministries and to our neighbors in need in Bartlesville. We will go out with joy, oh God. Bless those who have gathered here, whether in body or in spirit, and strengthen them, guide them, and surround them, surround us in your love. We pray these things in the name of the risen Christ, this Jesus who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. The text chosen for this day, like no other and like every other, is from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 to 39. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. These are the words of our tradition. Thanks be to God. 125 years ago, in the same year that Bartlesville was founded, while Oklahoma was still Indian Territory, First Christian Church had its beginnings on the banks of the Caney River. Revival was afoot, and the Reverend J.R. Charleston, the, the state evangelist from Kansas, came and called the faithful of Bartlesville to pray and to sing and to hear the good news and to be baptized in that river. Our records don't tell us whether there were 20 there or 200, but one thing is certain. The holy moved in that place. It moved in that place, but it also moved in the hearts of the people. Our scriptures are filled with images like this one of God's spirit moving in unlikely places and among unlikely people. God is always up to something, it seems. And today, today we gather not on a riverbank, but in this beautiful house of God, a place 
that many here have tre treasured for most, if not all of their lives. The purples and the blues of the sanctuary windows have served as a vivid backdrop for life, for life. Baby dedications and baptisms, weddings and funerals, life, rivers of living water. John tells us of Jesus' promise that the Holy Spirit would equip the believers to be the people of God. But not only that, that the rivers of living water would also flow out of the hearts of the believers. Beautiful image. And so it has. Those of you with uh, churchy backgrounds may have noticed that there's something a little bit off in the sanctuary today. In the colors of the church year that are shown in the pyramids and in the stoles worn by the ministers. In this season of the church year, everything should be white. Should still be white for Easter tide. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> we made a change. Not red. Red is the color for Pentecost. It is the color of the Holy Spirit. Red is rare and it's special. But in this day, and in this place, this is a celebration of that Holy Spirit and of the way that First Christian Church has accepted that spirit over the years. Red reminds us that we are never alone, that this congregation has been sustained by the living waters of the Holy Spirit from its very beginnings and all the way through its faithful ministry to this very day. That Holy Spirit has run like a river through this congregation, a river of living water. Now rivers, actual rivers, are dynamic things. As a river runs through the land, it changes, it changes things. At Phillips University, as an undergraduate student, I took a geology course where my science requirement sounded a whole lot easier than biology. <laughs> it wasn't. At the heart of geology, though, is observing the way that the earth recreates and changes itself through natural processes, like the movement of tectonic plates or volcanic activity or even the water cycle. In that geology course, though, I was particularly awed by the, ro by the role that the water takes in sculpting the earth. Something is harmless and small as a little raindrop joins with other drops to become mighty rivers. And suddenly that raindrop, that water, becomes powerful enough to etch stone, solid stone. Almost imperceptibly, the rivers move the grains of sand, grain by grain, and over the years, the riverbanks widen. Deep canyons appear, the rivers transform even themselves contorting their shape into oxbow lakes, even changing course from time to time. But God's living water is no less powerful than that actual physical water because the holy is what empowers us to find new ways to love God and new ways to love our neighbors. And so it has been for First Christian Church. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Galatians that the Spirit works to produce these fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. A community like this that is open to God's Spirit will produce these fruits. Now, that doesn't mean that an individual or a church will produce all of these all of the time, but with God's help and a whole lot of prayer and practice, our faith yields these fruits in abundance from time to time. I want to share with you now some of the ways that the Holy has moved through First Christian Church, ways that the fruits of the Holy Spirit have flourished among us. Since its founding, at least Seven ministers have been nurtured and sent from this congregation. These Timothys grew in faith in this place. They heard God's call. They believed that they were called to serve, and they went on to serve as pastors, as missionaries, as authors, as professors. First Christian has also been a place for growth and nurture of the ministers who served here 
along the way, including myself, and student interns, associate ministers. One minister of particular note that was mentioned earlier today, the Reverend George Beasley Jr. was not a Timothy, but after 13 years at First Christian in this place, he was called to lead the Council on Christian Unity for the disciples for the next 13 years until his death. Rivers of living water. First Christian Church has helped to found three congregations in Bartlesville. Central Christian Church, which began in 1921, that congregation had its last worship service in the 1960s, and several of those members are among us now. In 1923, two First Christian members organized the Sandy Creek Sunday School, which became the Sandy Creek Christian Church two years later. Today, that congregation still ministers to Bartlesville as Memorial Christian Church, an independent Christian church and Disciples Christian Church. Disciples was formed in the early 1960s. First Christian purchased 10 acres of land, sent 44 of its families, 115 members to start the new church. Disciples Christian Church is living and thriving and growing, and we pray that the Holy will continue to work within your community of Christ, rivers of living water. When Jesus was asked which of the commandments was the most important, Matthew records these as his words. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second like it is, a second like it is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Love of neighbor has been a driving force in the ministry of this congregation. First Christian worked with other churches in Bartlesville to found three social service, three social service agencies over its history. There were two in the 1960s, Women and Children in Crisis, which served Bartlesville until 2018, and Concern. Churches United for Community Concern. This agency still provides emergency food and financial assistance for rent and utilities and other necessities. And then in 1974, First Christian joined with six other churches to found the Pastoral Counseling Association or Pastoral Counseling Foundation, which is now Samaritan Counseling and Growth Center. This congregation has made a difference, has made an impact on the way that Bartlesville is able to love its neighbors at some of the most vulnerable times in their lives. And First Christians care and nurture will continue on through the legacy funds that this congregation has and will establish. Rivers of living water flowing out into the community long after First Christian is gone. Today, we're experiencing a taste of the rich worship life of First Christian. It has always included music. Music is a huge part of our worship. Choirs of adults and children, handbell choirs, community choirs, and the cherished pipe organ. That organ has sadly remained silent much of the time since Marjorie Maple passed away in March of last year. Marjorie was our organist and music staff member of more than 50 years. When you step foot on the staff here, they tend to hang on to you. <laughs> We're going to sing a hymn that Marjorie had written. It is in the back of your hymnal um, in just a few moments. That hymn lives on for Marjorie and for this church, Rivers of Living Water. Throughout our scriptures, from the Hebrew Bible to the Gospels to the writings of Paul, water provides a vivid image of the dynamic relationship between human beings and the holy. We thirst for something that matters in this world, for something that's going to sustain us in the desert times of our lives. And this is nothing unique to the people of our time. The prophet Isaiah beckoned to the people of Israel who were held captive in exile. He said, ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, he said. And he wasn't talking about just any water. 
to the water that never ceases to satisfy. The Gospel of John also frequently links water with the Holy Spirit, with the baptism of John, and perhaps more famously with Jesus telling Nicodemus that he must be born of water and of spirit. Like water, the Spirit flows into the believer's heart, and from it proceeds those fruits of the Spirit. And like the Caney River, the presence of First Christian Church in Bartlesville has changed it. It's been living water for the community and to the thousands of people who have called First Christian Church my church, our church. This living water has kept our remaining faithful members moving and growing and serving right up until this moment. The past two and a half years with you have not been easy. We have analyzed we have prayed and dreamed and prayed and laughed, and sometimes we cried and we prayed once again. The decisions that were made were difficult, but always they were framed by the question, this question, how can we be good and faithful st stewards to that which we have been entrusted? How can we be faithful even now? How can we be faithful to God even with this when this congregation no longer assembles each week for worship or study or fellowship? You've asked that question, and I believe that you've answered it well. Hear this and believe this. God has not forgotten First Christian. Even now, as we sit with some uncertainty about our final details, and with the emotions of this day, we know that God will see us through, and we know because we have seen this, and we have seen what God can do with the people of First Christian. We know because we have seen in the past the witness of our fathers and mothers in faith, generation after generation of the faithful. This was not a perfect church. No church is. No people are. Mistakes have surely been made. 125 years gives folks ample time to be human. But this was a good church with good and faithful people. And at times that God and Holy Spirit shone through you and through the church's ministry were magnificent. You made a difference. First Christian made a difference. The rivers of living water will flow on through you, through me, through the legacy of love and hope and of care that has been nurtured and created by First Christian Church. It is living water. It is living spirit, living love. And thanks be to God. Amen.
We come now to our time at the table, our time of offering, and our time of communion. In your bulletins, there is an insert, and there is a prayer that is printed about two-thirds of the way down that we will be saying in just a moment. I wanted to note today that offerings received uh, by First Christian Church today will go to our legacy funds. These are the funds that will benefit several of the ministries of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ, and also uh, several agencies here in Bartlesville. Those are listed, and I'd, I'd like to read those for you. Agape Mission, Camp Christian, Christian Church Disciples of Christ in Oklahoma, Churches Uniting for Community Concern, Disciples Christian Church, Bartlesville, Disciples Mission Fund, The Journey Home, On the Rock Ministries, Phillips Seminary, and Ray of Hope Advocacy Center. First Christian will indeed live on as its funds support these ministries of care, ministries of concern, ministries of faithful service to God. Will you join me in the unison prayer of thanksgiving and dedication? Gracious God, accept these gifts as a sign of our desire to serve you. Transform them into instruments of peace and grace, justice and mercy, healing and wholeness. In the name of Christ Jesus, amen. Please rise as we sing the doxology and dedicate our morning's offerings. The Lord's Supper communion is central to the faith that we proclaim as members of the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. Our communion table is one that is set by Jesus. The invitation is given by Jesus, not by one congregation, not by me. This table is open for everyone who would like to participate. I'm going to invite you in a minute to come up forward, we will be uh, taking our communion, going to the outside aisles where we will sing our final hymn. So uh, in a moment, I'll invite you to come. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Easter is over, Jesus is risen and our spirits have been filled with the wonder and joy of resurrection, bringing new life and hope to the world. We come to this communion table in remembrance of our Savior, the risen Christ. May this bread and cup nourish our spirits and keep us mindful that the love of Christ is constant and everlasting. Thank you, Father, for the wondrous gift of your Son. Amen. Amen. On the night that Jesus gathered in the upper room with his disciples, with his friends, he took a loaf of bread and giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. And he shared it with his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner, after supper, Jesus took a cup and he poured it. And giving thanks once again to God, he said, this cup is the covenant renewed in my blood. Each time that you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, remember me until I come again. All are invited, all are welcome, partake in love and partake in joy.
want you come. doesn't know when she was screaming. that grandma sway going. <laughs>
advice from him. No, our advice from here. I'm going to join the circle here. I noticed that we are, we have a couple of different circles going, so we may want to have this be a circle or this be a circle. We may just all but want to be one big massive mess of humanity, and that's, I think, a wonderful thing to be. Um, our quartet is going to sing, and you will be invited to join in singing on the last verse. The words are printed in your bulletin. And now may God, our creator, strengthen you and give you courage. May Jesus, our redeemer, fill your hearts with genuine love. And may the Holy Spirit, our sustainer, remind you always that you are beloved children of God. Jesus said, peace be with you. And God has sent me, so I send you. Go in peace and go with God. Amen. <laughs>